Hi everybody, welcome. Today we are going to be going over triggers, exactly what they are and how they're used in your marketing. These are psychological influence tactics that get your uh, prospects and customers to engage better in your message. To so, pull the trigger. <laughs> that's it, To the take trigger. that action, everybody. You sounded just so like a professor. You need to, it's a white coat. Yes. Yes. So, and we Check. have amazing multimedia support with us today here, guys. Look at this. Psh, on the Boss Vision, we're going to be teaching from the That's Boss right. Vision, so stick around. It's going to be an amazing episode. And here we go. So there are many different psychological triggers in order to get your customer to pull the trigger and take action. What we wanna do is we wanna start with what we feel are the five most powerful ones, which means they're a little bit advanced and some of them can be more complicated, but if you can zero in on these five triggers, you're gonna see a conversion bump. I mean, that's what we see. This is, this is what we trade from every single time we sit down and write a sales message or even a goodwill message. We still use these triggers. These are, it's a little different than a template. These are intangibles. This is something that when you understand how these work, you can have these by your side when you're writing an email or sales copy, creating a video sales mm. letter, thinking about the big picture in your launch or just the thing that you would write into a guarantee. These are the things that when you understand these concepts we're gonna go over are gonna allow you to use them in your marketing to increase conversions. And I think we should start off with a big capital failure. It could be capital F of ours, right? Absolutely. Let's screw it up. And isn't it ironic that we're talking about honesty? <laughs> Billy Joel. <laughs> Billy Joel spoke about honesty. Honesty is such a lovely word, right? Is it? Well, so mm. let's just set this up. Let's put a frame around this trigger. Honesty, we're not talking about integrity as a person, mm -hmm. right? What we're talking about is the way that you position what you're asking the marketplace to do has to be congruent with the way that you behave. So let's just drill down. You got it. Right? Absolutely. I'm, just, I'm gonna hit the boss vision. So when we're saying integrity in your marketing, what we're really talking about here is that's walking it. the walk. Walking right? the walk means, and we're going to say it right here, if at any point what you say is not congruent with your life, your business, or your words, actions, and practices, then you set off a negative intuition radar. Something goes up hmm, with, the, with the person Something's that's following right you in your marketing that's more damaging than the benefit of your positive message. Right, so you could basically say, hmm. my positive message is I'm going to give you the numbers to win the lottery every time, if you don't get this straight, that's gonna be actually overshadowed by the fact that there's something not right about you. Yeah, and Andy said we're gonna use our company as an example. We did our oh. very successful video genesis launch and the premise of the first video in the was, bad in the, in the bad, bad andy video, video is to say there were 34 mistakes that most marketers make even the experienced ones <laughs> and one of, <laughs> one of the 34 mistakes was not to start your video with, with a, a cold fancy, open with well with a fancy animation yeah, right with a fancy with, animation with a big blow up mm -hmm. animation because those first 8 to 15 seconds mm -hmm. in your video are the most critical mm -hmm. that's when you want to be delivering a hook that's when you want to be giving the promise of the premise of what they're about to consume so that they can say to themselves, and, and this is about qualifying the prospect, mm -hmm. which we talk about as another trigger, they can say, this is relevant to me. They have hit on either a pain point or a pleasure point that I want to have. Therefore, I'm going to consume it. And there's proof in that and the fact that you guys are watching this message right now. Yes, if you're okay. watching it, we did it. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. exactly. You saw a cold open. We mm -hmm. said, hey, we're going to talk to you about tri triggers. Mm -hmm. We went to our logo at that point to right. brand ourselves, and now here we are. However, we said that you should not start with a logo animation. And what ended up happening is we took some of our previous videos sent them off to our team and should what we, happened? Should we blame someone else or should I, Look, what we didn't tell our team was, hey guys, Mike and I spend the first 15 to 20 seconds setting the frame around the video. There should be a logical break point where then you can drop in the logo animation that gives us our brand. And instead what happened was, editorially, they just cut out that logical break point. They're like, why are these guys stopping? And they chopped it out and then put our logo at the front. So there's actually two problems with that. Number one, we wasted that eight seconds while our logo was playing exactly. on somebody having to sit there for eight seconds and say, 
what is this about? I see a fancy logo that's not doing anything mm -hmm. for me. And, you know, so we're losing their attention, which means we have to get to the point faster, number one. Number two, from a technical standpoint, those animations are generally speaking, they require higher bandwidth mm -hmm. to stream. So you're much more apt to run into like the spinning buffering yeah. problem because you've got this fancy animation going on. Whereas if it's just two dudes mm -hmm. standing in front of a TV, the boss vision <laughs> saying, hey guys, here's what's gonna happen. It's actually skinnier bandwidth. So exactly, so at the end of the day, we broke our, we broke our own rule. We told the market, and this was the, you know, the, the position of our launch, that you can't do this even if you're experienced. And then we go out and we broke the first rule of what we said that you shouldn't do. So Andy and I quickly told our team th no, this point right we here. we caught it. For, yes. I mean, there's a happy ending, right? Yes, we, the happy we ending. We caught it, before, is, somebody is we caught said, it. before somebody called us out. But the point is, you know, we've got some very rabid fans. We don't know who saw we them said Mike and that. Andy are, they're not walking the walk. They're not eating their own dog. Exactly. Food. So we fix it and because we're conscious of this. So you don't want to do this in your business. You don't want to say, hey, never do something in a subject line that if you're teaching email marketing and say it's tricky and then you you did that to get them to watch the video. People are going to, they're going to, uh, that radar is going to go off and something is just not right and you could lose all the benefit of maybe you said something. Here's, here's a little like survival tip from well, one, two entrepreneurs to another entrepreneur. Maybe never say never in anything that you yeah, do. Right. <laughs> maybe say try not to do it because right. you don't want to paint yourself into the corner. But, but we're talking about the thing that we screwed up. What, let's, let's prepare them for the next part mm -hmm. of this, which is what you want to do is you want to be able to teach a process like mm -hmm. we did and then demonstrate it with your follow-on marketing, what happens is you make your customer recognize that. They're like looking at that like, oh, that person, they just taught me about that in a previous video or a previous blog post. I recognize it, it makes them feel smart. So, so not only is it uh, don't do what you say you shouldn't, it's also walk the talk. Do, make sure it's evident yes. that you're, you're living uh, your business and your lifestyle in the way that you convey to, to your people so it's evident and they see it. And when, they, when it is evident, they feel smarter, mm -hmm. they feel like you just taught them something, that is actually the psychological trigger mm -hmm. right there. So if you walk the walk and your audience can recognize it, that's the trigger that makes them say, I understand now not only the concept, but what this looks like when an expert does cool. it. Cool. All right, so here's the other thing about this integrity in your marketing and honesty is that it, it creates exclusivity. And let's just talk about the pet rock <laughs> for a second. No, it's not for everyone because it never is. Don't fight that reality. I think sometimes when, we, when you over when people oversell and they're they're trying to we believe you yeah. and I believe that video genesis every single marketer in the world should have video genesis mm -hmm. we absolutely believe it because it, a it's that mm -hmm. good and b videos mm -hmm. suck mm -hmm. just that bad yeah. you really need that but we understand the reality mm -hmm. is is that not everybody is going to believe that about mm -hmm. themselves so we don't waste a lot of time watering down our message to the unwashed masses. Yeah, and I think that I think when if somebody's interested in something, they look for a point for validation and they like those things at the bottom if you're looking for video or a camera and it says something, this is not for and it says if you're going to be creating a Hollywood film blah, blah, blah this is for the hobbyist, maybe it's your first time shooting a video and then suddenly it that's the validation. They identify with uh, it. Okay. They say yeah. I'm that person. Mm -hmm. That's what I want. And so when we say it creates exclusivity, mm. it's actually a way to segment your marketplace mm. so that you can talk more intelligently mm. to them. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I don't want, I don't want, ab I don't want to have to service absolutely everybody in my marketplace. I want to service the people that are dedicated. Mm -hmm. I want to service the people that are passionate. Have, have a product or looking to have a product, not looking for a business opportunity. And appreciate the fact mm -hmm. that they understand the reality of the mm -hmm. situation, which is not everything fits into a neat little, mm -hmm. you know, box mm -hmm. that sometimes, while they're consuming the product, guess what? There might be an example that isn't their example. Their job mm -hmm. is to synthesize how they would do it, right? You have so, to stand for something. Uh, it, it, I, I totally agree, mm -hmm. and, and I'm not to continue to like pound mm -hmm. away at this thing, but this is a lot about going where you're celebrated, mm -hmm. not just tolerated, <laughs> and it's also, you get a better quality of customer out of this. Mm -hmm. You follow what I'm yep. saying? You get it, baby. Absolutely. All right, let's get it. All right, now, we were just talking about qualification of the prospect, right? And, and so here's our little line. You bring that 
and we'll bring this, and together, we'll boss it, mm -hmm. which is our euphemism for we'll make it better. Right. So when, I'm not sure if you wrote this or I wrote this, one of us wrote this, but I know what it means to me. And what it means to me is, I get to say to somebody, mm -hmm which not many people get to do this mm -hmm. in the marketing. They get to say, you're a passionate topic expert, right? Mm -hmm. That's our marketplace. Mm -hmm. You want this thing. You're excited about it. We understand that. And you use that to get more buy-in from them, right? You use that to identify. It's called Absolutely. empathy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so if I know where you're at in the grand scheme of things, it's going to be a lot easier for me to communicate to you that, if you can bring these tools here, I can help you take these tools and do something else. We, we did that in that product. We, we said, if you've got a product and you want to share it with the world, we're going to show you how to create the better message so that people can benefit from your product. Right. We don't, and, and, and I guess what, what we're really trying to get to here is the qualification of the prospect is you get to frame this in a very positive way. And, and you're never going to find yourself saying something that's not true, like, it doesn't matter if you have a lot of experience or no experience whatsoever, I'm gonna be able to help. Because mm -hmm. guess what, that's just not true, no. that's stupid, and our marketplace is more sophisticated. So just before we close on this particular segment, back in the day mm -hmm. when you know you used to send direct mail or there would be direct response mm -hmm. television advertising, you know, that market was, that, that medium was focused on a mass market. Correct. So yeah. they didn't have to really promise much because maybe they were selling sham wows mm -hmm, yeah. or something like that. It, it didn't have to do much for them to get impressed, but in our market, which is much more sophisticated, it's always to your benefit to tell the prospect that they have to bring a certain amount of their own expertise mm -hmm. along and that they have already raised their hand mm -hmm. and said, I'm different than everybody mm -hmm. else, treat me that way. Well said. So in the next segment, we're going to continue on. We're going to talk about the next set of triggers that you're going to want to watch. So somewhere on this page, there is additional information, probably a link right below this mm -hmm. video, that you can click on and get more information about psychological triggers. Or, and or, we recommend you do both, hang around for the next segment and we'll, con we'll go further in depth. And leave us a comment if there was something yeah, specific right. you liked in this video. Thanks.